कीर्तन में टैको नानक जान सच्चा सो सब कट तिसके करने हार सदा सदा किस को नमस्कार प्रभु की उसत करो दिन रात बिसते आओ सांस गिरास सब कछ वरते तिसका किया जैसा करे तैसा को किया अपना के आप करने हार दूसर कौन कहे विचार जिस नो कृपा करे तिस आपन नाम दे बड पागी नानक जन से सनो तजो सयान पसुर जनो सिमरो हर हर राय एकास हर मन रखो नानक दूप परम पोजाए अष्टपति मानुक की ते पृथ्वी सब जान देवन को एक है भगवान जिसके दिए रहे अघाए बहुन कृष्णा लग गया है मार रखे को आप मानुक के किच नहीं हाँ तिसका हुकुम बुझ सुख होए तिसका नाम रख कंठ परोए सिमर 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 प्रभु सोए नानक बेघन न लागे कोए उस तत्व मन में कारण कार कर्मन मेरे सत व्योहार निर्मल रसना अमृत पियो सदा सोहेला करने जियो नैनो पेख ठाकुर का रंग साध संग बिन सै सब संग चरण चलो मार्ग गोविंद मिटे पाप जपिए हर बिंद कर हर कर्म सवन हर कथा हर दर गनान को जल मथा बड भागी ते जन जग माहे सदा सदा हर के गुण गाहे राम नाम जो करे विचार से तनवंत गनी संसार मंतन मुख बोले हर मुखी सदा सदा जान होते सुखी एक को एक एक पछाने एक उत की ओ सो जी जाने नाम संग जिसका मन मानिया नानक तिन है निरंजन जानिया गुर प्रसाद आपन आप सुझाए तिसकी जानो तृष्णा मुझाए साध संग हर हर जस कहत सर्व रोग ते ओ हर जन रहत अंधन कीर्तन केवल बख्या ग्रहस्त में सोई निर्वा एक ऊपर जिस जन की आसा तिस की कटिये जम की फासा पार ब्रह्म की जिस मन भूख नानक तिस न लाग दूख जिसको हर प्रभु मन चित आवे सो संत सोहेला नहीं दुलावे जिस प्रभु अपना कृपा करे सो सेवक कहो किस ते डरे जैसा सा तैसा दृष्टाया अपने कार्य में आप समाया सोदत 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 सीजिया गुर प्रसाद तत सब बुझिया जब देखो तब सब कुछ नानक सो सुखम सोई अस्तु किच जन में नह किच मरे आपन चलत आप ही करे आवन जावन दृष्ट अंदृष्ट आज्ञाकारी तारी सब श्रेष्ठ आपे आप सगन मह आप अनक जुगत रच थाप था अब नासी नाही किच खंड तारन तार रयो ब्रह्मंड अलख अपेम पुरख परता आप जपाए तनानक जा जिन प्रभु जाता सु शोभावंत सगल संसार युध रह तिन मंत प्रभु के सेवक सगल उधारन प्रभु के सेवक दुख बिसारन आपे मेल ले कृपा गुर का शब्द जप पहे निहार उनकी सेवा सोई लागे जिस नुक पाक रह बड़ पाक है नाम जपत पावह 
झूठी है सहज साची से जोते सोवांगी से जोते सोवांगी Hello everyone, welcome to today's satsang. Okay, so I'll start with today's schedule. Uh, today's hymn is by Manpreet Ji. Uh, Be still for the presence of Lord. Then uh, Michael will talk. Then Prem Pal Ji will talk about Sufism, rainbow of love and devotion. Then we'll have short dhyan session for five minutes. Uh, later we'll play master's YouTube video and then we'll do group meditation with love and devotion. Thank you so much. Uh, now we'll start with the hymn. Hello everyone, my name is Manpreet and today I would like to sing a hymn called Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come thou before him now, with reverence and fear in him no sin is found we stand on holy ground be still for the presence of the lord the holy one is here be still for the glory of the lord it was shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of life. Be still for the glory of the Lord, is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal 
to minister his grace. No work too hard for him, in faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Satsang. Wow, Manfred, we love you. So beautiful. The Holy One is here. It can't get better. What a beautiful gift from God you are to Satsang. And please keep doing Seva. Keep doing Seva. We look forward for your Seva and all your family's Seva every time. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. My dear Holy Family, we are so lucky here in this satsang that we sit in the remembrance, in the grace, in the glory of our true perfect master, Ishwar Puri Ji, who showers his love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiving, his unconditional love to us. As, uh, as Ishwar Puri Ji said, that there is nothing, nothing that can break my bond to you. He said that. He said we can do nothing that can break the bond of the love, the unconditional love of Ishwar Puri Ji to us. How lucky we are that we sit here and we get, everybody who sits here gets a shower, a drench of his holy nectar, a drench of God, a drench of the kingdom of God. Everything here, his grace is showered on us daily. What a beautiful thing that we are all sitting in his boat, that nothing can take us away from this boat, that we will keep in his boat until we reach the kingdom of God. This is our luck. This is our glory, that we just have to relax, to, to relax and enjoy the show. As there is the experience, which is not real, the experience of the three worlds, we put on the physical body, the astral body, the causal body to, to come on an experience, to come on an experience. And in this experience, there is the experiencer, as Ishwar Puri Ji says, that the experiencer is real, but the experience is just like a DVD. It's just going on. And we have to enjoy this experience, no matter what it is, no matter what God puts our way in this experience, in this game show, in this movie that has been already played, that has been already predestined, that moment by moment, this life has been predestined. Even our next thought, even our next thought has been pre-written. We cannot change it. In the beginning, in the beginning of my spiritual quest, when I was young, when I was a seeker, after truth, then I met my master Santakar Singh, and we were given the way. We were given the way, don't eat meat, be vegetarian, uh, live a pure life, do your diary. And, uh, and, uh, and I made a resolution at that time that I want to live a holy lifestyle. I want to change myself. And uh, I, I want to get the grace of God and the grace of master. So I started doing my diary every day. I I, and I started, uh, you know, going on retreat and doing meditation as much as possible, as much as possible to just, exp to just increase God in me. And, uh, and at that time, I did not realize that it was all a show, that it was a movie that has been played. So suppose there was in my destiny that, uh, you know, uh, there is, so like uh, suppose something that is not by, like uh, that master prescribed maybe like I wasn't chased because you know I had I was just living an ordinary life uh, and in the ordinary life we go through uh, we have our karma we have our karma that has been uh, that has to go and be played in our life and at that time I didn't know that it was just a movie it was just a show so like suppose I uh, I fall into chastity then uh, the feelings of regret remorse crying Oh my God, what have I done? You know, uh, how am I going to reach God? How am I going to reach the kingdom of God? Not knowing and that feeling of uh, guilt, guilt and, uh, and uh, it was uh, overwhelming me. It was affecting my meditation. And then 
the guilt comes and then resolutions. I make resolution never to do it again. And then retreat, 40 day retreat, going to the ashram and trying again, trying again. But then in my spiritual development, Ishwar Puri after many years appeared in my life and he increased my awareness that, hey, hold on, hold on. He gave us the four principles of spirituality that no matter what your destiny is, enjoy the show, no matter what comes in your destiny, as you cannot change it, you cannot change it. It has been already preordained. Just enjoy it from the soul level. And not only enjoy it from the soul level, but we have the ability, we have the ability in this show, we have the ability to slip, to slip from one reality to another reality, to another reality, as there is the door, the 10th door that has been given to us, which reminds me of a story. And don't go away, I'm gonna say a story that you never heard before. But this story, I, maybe I said it, that you know there was a, a, a fat man and a bald man, and I think he was ugly, no, no, he was handsome. <laughs> he was lost in a fort. He was in a fort. And, in this, and he was blind. He couldn't see. This fort had a door. Uh, and he wanted to leave the fort. So he asked people around. There was nobody around. So he started to feel the, the fort and go around, around, around. But because he was bald, every time he came close to the door, his head started itching him. And then he started itching his head. <laughs> And when he started itching his head, he missed the door, and then he kept looking and looking. And this uh, this story is a resemblance that uh, we we are the blind and the deaf. He was, oh yeah, he was deaf too. <laughs> Poor guy, he had hard karma. <laughs> he was fat and he was deaf <laughs> and he was blind. <laughs> so this is our condition that in this world that we have been given, we have been given, we have went through so many, so many, so many cycles of reincarnation and then we have been given this human form this human form that has the secret door however we miss the secret door we miss the secret door and then we keep coming again and again and again but in but now we are so we are so lucky that the that the truth has been told to us that uh, that uh, that the masters have told us the truth all of us sitting here that there is the secret door and we have the human body so we are so lucky that we whenever we want whenever we want, with the grace of the master, we sit in his lap, we sit in his memory, we talk to him, and sometimes grace gets showered and the door gets opened and boom, we slip into another reality. So that is the beautiful thing in our life, that no matter what our karma is, no matter what our destiny is, we have the ability to slip into the ocean of love, to slip, to, 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 to slip in God, to, to slip in the arms of the Holy Master, to slip in his grace, to be in his love. That we have, we have that, that no matter what the show is, we can sit and we can concentrate on the doorway to God, the doorway to the kingdom of God, and just pass, slip. And that what makes our life here in this world worth living that no matter what our destiny is, that we have this ability to slip into another world, into another reality, into another thing, that even we can reach levels by the grace of master when he pulls us, also this is preordained. Enlightenment is preordained. When he pulls us into nirvana, when he pulls us beyond space and beyond time, into maqam al-haq as they call, or a, 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 a just the abode of truth, God and the kingdom of God, which the saints say that it starts, that, that, that we first we realize ourselves as soul in the par brahm, which is a very, very beautiful place and we can enjoy there, we can enjoy there. But then there is another step, which is totality. And that also is by the grace of the master. He has to pull us, but we are so lucky. We are so lucky to have a total one to have a total one in our life, Ishwar Puri Ji, that gave us the grace of Baba Sawan Singh. So when we sit here all together as brothers and sisters in this boat of love, the boat of love, the love boat. Wasn't there a show on TV called The Love Boat? Okay, cool, I just remembered that. Well, I used to watch it when I was young. Yes, so we sit in the love boat of Master and 
he shall and he pulls us. He keeps pulling us. So there, so no matter what our destiny is, no, it doesn't matter that we have the perfect master in our life. He connected us with the holy sound that is so soothing, that keeps adding God to us, that keeps adding love, keeps adding nourishment to our soul, to the food, the food, the water of life is there. Oh, in Chicago, it's minus 15 centigrade. So the water outside is frozen, but the water of life can never be frozen. The water of life always keeps trickling, always keeps coming, always keeps streaming towards us. All what we have to do is put our attention towards the water of life and fill our cups drop by drop, drop by drop. We fill our cups. The bucket of spirituality gets filled drop by drop until it gets full to the brim and then we will start it starts going out when it starts to going out it will start to bless this world it will start to bless the creation of lord god the whole three worlds will be blessed from us the initiates of the perfect master ishwar puri ji so i wanted to tell you a story this story is about nashu and it was told by rumi Maulana Rumi, who was a Sufi saint, who was a Sufi saint. Maulana Rumi used to say, nothing held him. He said the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes he taught through X-rated stories. I'm not going to say those. But this is a PG-13, or maybe, yeah, on the borders of PG-13 and R. I never said it before because it was PG-13, but you are all here adults. And a sense of humor, the eighth sense that Ishwar Puriji talked about is very important, that we can laugh through life. We can laugh through life and this is just an experience. This is just an experience that we are experiencing a DVD that is being played and we're gonna laugh through it no matter what happened. So this story is about Nashu who had a destiny. Don't, no, 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 listen, don't get jealous from the destiny of Nashu. Otherwise you're gonna have to be reborn into his character <laughs> because you might get jealous of his destiny when I read the story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, yes, the story was told by Maulana Rumi, and it is about no matter what your destiny is, there could be a grace from the a grace from a perfect master, and whatever a master a perfect master wishes for you, it's gonna happen because he's connected with the absolute God. He's connected with Satpursh. He is Satpursh. He is connected with the divine. If he wishes something on us, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen hundred percent. And this story about Nashu, his destiny and his desire, he had a desire for God. He had a desire to change himself, you know. So he met a saint and here, let me read it. It's better if I read it from the, the way it was written by Rumi. Um, oh, where is it? Oh, here. Okay. All right. Nashu. Some time ago, there was a man named Nashu. He made his living shampooing women in a bathhouse. Don't get jealous. He had a face like a woman, but he was not effeminate, though he disguised his fertility so as to keep his job. <laughs> he loved touching the women as he washed their hair. He stayed sexually alert at full strength all the time massaging the beautiful woman, especially the princess and her ladies in waiting. Sometimes he thought of changing jobs, of doing something where he wouldn't be constantly lustful, but he couldn't quit. He went to a mystic saint and said, please remember, rem please remember me in a prayer. That holy man was spiritually free and totally open to God. He knew Nashu's secret, but with God's gentleness, he did not speak it. <laughs> a Gnostic says little, but inside he is full of mysteries and crowded with voices. Whoever is served that cup keeps quiet. The holy man laughed softly and prayed aloud, May God, <laughs> may God cause you to change your life in the way you know you should. <laughs> the prayer of such a sheikh is different from other prayers. 
he has so completely dissolved his ego, nothing, nothing himself. That was, he says, is like God talking to you. How could such a prayer not be granted? So this sheikh has dissolved himself into nothingness. Uh, talking to him was like talking to God himself. That means we're found to change Nasu. That the means were found to change Nasu. While he was pouring water into a basin for a naked woman, she felt and discovered that a pearl was missing from her earring. Quickly, they locked the doors. They searched the cushions, the towels, the rugs, and the discarded clothes, nothing. Now they search ears, and mouth and every cleft and orifice. Everyone is made to strip. <laughs> and the queen's lady, Chamberlain, probes one by one. The naked woman, Nasu, meanwhile, has gone to his private closet, cl closet trembling. I didn't steal the pearl, but if they undress and search me, They'll see how excited I get with, the, with these nude ladies. God, please help me. I have been cold and lecherous, but cover my sin this time. Please <laughs> let me not be exposed for how I've been. I'll repent. He weeps and moans and weeps. For the moment it is upon him, Nasu. We have searched everyone, but you, come out. <laughs> At that moment, his spirit grows wings and lifts his ego and, and lifts. His ego falls like a battered wall. He unites with God, alive, but emptied of Nasu. His ship sinks and in its place move the ocean waves. His body, his body's disgrace, like a falcon loosened binding, slips from the falcon's foot. His stones drink in water. His field shines like a strain and gold thread in it. Someone dead a hundred years steps out, well and strong and handsome. A broken stick breaks into bud. This all happens inside Nasu, after the call that gave him such fear, a long pause, a long waiting silence, a long waiting silence. Then a shout from one of the women. Here is it, here is it. The bathhouse fills with clapping. Nasu sees his own life sparkling before him. The woman came to apologize. We're sorry, we're so sorry. We didn't trust you. We just knew that you you would taken that you did you you you'd taken the that pearl. They kept talking about how they suspected him and begging his forgiveness. Finally, he replies, "I am such I am more I'm, I I am much more guilty than anyone has thought or said. I am the worst person in the world. What you have said is only a hundredth of what I've actually done." Don't ask my pardon. You don't know me. No one knows me. God has hidden my sneakness. Satan taught me tricks. <laughs> but after a time, those became easy. And I thought Satan, and I, and I taught, oops, sorry. And I taught Satan some new variations. <laughs> God saw what I did, but chose not to publicly reveal my sin. And now I am sown back into wholeness. Whatever I've done now was not done. Whatever obedience I didn't do, now I did. Pure, noble, free like a cypress, like a lily, is how I suddenly am and said, oh no, help me. And that, oh no, became a rope. Let down in my well. I have climbed out to stand here in the sun. One moment I was at the bottom of a dank, fearful narrowness, and the next I am not contained by this universe. If every tip 
of every hair on me could speak, I still couldn't say my gratitude. In the middle of these streets and gardens, I stand and say and say again, and it's all I say. I wish everyone could know what I know. So I hope you like the story of Nasu. Did you ever hear it before? I don't know. I think it's, yeah, it's a new story. Okay, so no matter what our destiny is, we can slip into God, into totality, into oneness, into master by coming to the, the secret door. Enter ye in at the, at the straight gate, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. It will lead us to life, it will lead us to joy, and it will lead us to see that we are only the experiencer and everything else is the experience. We watch the experience from above. When we watch the experience from above and know it's just a show, we will always be happy. We will never feel guilty. We will just do our best to keep at the door and the rest is his job. The rest is the job of our Holy Father, Baba Sawan Singh and Ishwar Puriji. Okay, I'm gonna play the four principles of spirituality from Ishwar Puriji for you. And then after that, I'll, I'm gonna play the uh, talk of uh, Brother Prempel. One of the big factors of uh, failure in life is to carry too much guilt and too much regret. And since we carry guilt and regret of things that we say, oh, we could have done that way. Nobody can do any other way. Law of karma operates like that. The Indian spirituality believes in four principles. It's good to know what the Indian spiritual... Then I'm not talking of American Indian, I'm talking of the East Indian, okay? The Indian from where I come. They believe, first, that whatever happens had to happen that way. They could not change it. Second, whoever you meet in your life, you are supposed to meet and there is a purpose in meeting that person. There is no chance meeting with anybody and it's all based upon your past actions. And they have come either to teach you something, learn something, pay off something, receive something and it's only to settle something that you meet anybody in life. The third is, whatever has to start in this life, where you say, I want to plan this, I want to do this, there's a time fixed for this, and only happen at that time, neither before nor later. And the fourth principle is the most important one, which says, what is over, is over. Don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to the past. Don't hold, hold on, oh, I made a mistake, I should not have done it. There was no way. Hindsight can do a lot of things which your real information at that time would not have done. You would have got done exactly the same thing. But then why regret? Why carry guilt with you? Carrying guilt lowers your energy, lowers your power to concentrate, is an interference in your meditation. So we must learn how to overcome this feeling of guilt and say what's over is over. Fourth principle. So remember the four principles and you'll make better success in your spiritual endeavors. Could you repeat those? First, whatever is to happen, will happen that way. Second, whoever you have to meet, you're meeting for a certain reason and not by accident or chance. Third, whatever has to begin at a certain time, it begin only at that time, neither before nor after. Fourth, what is over is over. Simple. One of the... Radha Swami everyone, my today's topic is Sufism. Sufism is not a religion. Sufism is a path of love and devotion. And it started from Greek, that area. And there are many Sufi saints even before Prophet Muhammad. And Socrates says, know thyself. 
and it started after him it was known named Sufism and there are many fakirs or many saints were born in the Middle East during the time of Muhammad Saab and they followed that path. The name was given as Sufism originally there was no name of that path. The path of love and devotion been here since the seekers been here. Seekers are always here. Whenever the seekers are here, the perfect living master will come to pick up those souls, those seekers. And the path the master will show them is a path of love and devotion. And that path is also known as path of the master or Sufism. It is a path of love. In Sufism, those fakir or those saints believe that you have to have a perfect level master in your life. Also, they believe in reincarnation and they also believe in karmas. While those who strictly believe in Quran, they don't believe in those things. And they think Muhammad was the last prophet. That's it. We have a Quran and no more. But all those Sufi saints, they do believe in Quran, but they also believe that you have to have a perfect living master in your life. So that can show you the path of love and devotion. Without master, you can't go back where you came from. Mazhab e ishq az hamadi na juda ast. Mulana Romji says, My majab, my religion is love. And there's no difference between love and God. Malbi har gizd na shud mulai rum. Taong gulam shamist brezi shud. Mulana Romji says, If I hadn't had a darshan of Shamastabres, my master, if I hadn't got a karma or initiation from him, I hadn't become Mulana Rum or Rumi, the most famous Sufi poet or saint. He ended up becoming a saint. He ended up get, becoming a PLM. He got self-realization after getting initiation from Shamis Tabrez. Because Shamish Tavrez, he was perfect living master and Mulana Rum, he was a Maulabi in a masjid. But he ended up becoming a saint only after having a darshan, only after having an initiation from a perfect living master, Shamish Tavrez. These saints been here a long time. In India, the Sufism started in India with the Mayudin Chishtiji. Then after that, Khwaza Kutubuddin, Bakhtiar Ali Kaki, then Baba Fridji, Nizamuddin Auliyaji, and Amir Khusrosi. These are the Sufi saints of India. After that, many Sufi saints were born in Punjab. The most famous one is Sai Bulle Shah Ji, and Shah Hussain Ji, and also other many saints. These are the Sufi saints of India and Punjab. And those saints has the same thing. They believe in having a perfect living master. And they always stay in a blissful state. Blissful state. Originally, most Sufi saints were born in Baghdad area. Rabia Basri, Junaid Baghdadi, Mansur, and all those. And they never had that many disciples. That many disciples. Even Junaid had only 20 disciples. They mostly kept it secret, not gave initiation to too many, only to the selected souls. After Junaid Baghdadi, it became more like more and more open form. In India, Amayuddin Cheshtiji, then Kotubdin Bakhtiar, then Baba Freed Nizamuddin Auling and Amir Khusroji, they spread Sufism in India. 
in Sufism, they have four steps to follow. The first one is Shriyat, second Trikat, third Hakikat, and fourth one is Marfat. The first one is Shriyat. Shriyat is just like rules and regulations and laws and orders. What to follow, what to do, what not to do. You need to follow certain rules, like even when master gives you initiation, he will give you certain rules and regulation not to drink, not to eat meat, not to eat eggs, and all those things, do meditation two and a half hour. And all those things they are known as Shriyat. Shriyat is more like an outside identification that what you follow. What you follow. In Trikat, Trikat is the Trika or method. What to do? The method is light and sound meditation or Surat Shabd Jog. To put your attention at the sound current and concentrate at the third eye center or other method that your murshid or master will explain you. How to withdraw your consciousness to the third eye center, how to become thoughtless, mindless and all those things. This is Trikat or method. In Trikat and method, Simran and Dhyan is part of that Trikat or method. And if you keep doing it, eventually you will get connected with the inner light and sound. Once you start listening to the sound, then you start getting the pull. And once you see our master inside in a radiant form, you can drop off the Simran. Then the inner light sound and your master, the Nuri Soup or radiant form of your master will pull you and you will keep making progress inside inside but still your mind change from andiman to pindiman if you make more progress you reach the universal mind then your mind becomes brahmandiman but still you are in the realms of mind you have to make a lot more progress to go further and it you can keep doing it keep going up only it depends who is your master how far your master or murshid is gone? If your master is only up to the first level, Sahastal Kamal or Makamme Allah, you can stay there and listen to the sound of Kenta and Sank, Churchwell and Kaunj, and enjoy the blissful state there. If your murshid or your master has gone up to universal mind or drum, you cross that crooked tunnel or Bankanar, you go to the next level. And hear the sound of Nagara, cloud sound and a sound of a thunder and a very beautiful big area to discover and red color light there. If your master is only up to that universal mind area or Brahm, you can stay there many many yogas and enjoy the blissful state. After that, if your master has gone to Par Brahm, Par Brahm, then your mind, physical body and sensory body stays behind. Only your pure soul or pure level of consciousness starts from there. And this is the third level of Sufi Fakirs or Sufism. And that is known as Hakikat. Hakikat means reality. Now you know. Now you know what reality is. Now you start getting self-realization. Self-realization starts from the third level or power drum and that is known as Hakikat. Even in Hakikat, when you go power drum, you hear the sound of Kingri, Srangi, Star, you see the full moon and you see all those beautiful, so beautiful things and you also see a waterfall of holy waters and the ponds full with holy water and your soul take a bath in Amritsar a big pool where locust flower is in the middle 
when you take bath and there then the light of your own soul becomes equivalent to 12 suns then you know the haqeeqat even after that if your master is only up to par brahm or beyond time and space and he hasn't crossed mukam islamat or dark tunnel you can't cross it unless your master already had crossed that and reached sohang desh and such kind if your master is up to that level par brahm those masters are known as sad gurus you can stay there enjoy the blissful state this is beyond time and space it's a very beautiful area you can hear the sound of kringi kingri srangi star and enjoy in a blissful state that is haqeeqat self realization starts from there but still there is one more step one more step in sufism that is marfat marfat means through someone marfat means zariya that you get something through someone like if you go to the court and you want to see a judge you have to have an attorney with you same thing here if you want to cross that dark tunnel if you want to want to go back to totality of consciousness or go back to god you have to have a person a master who can take you you can go back home to such kind with the marfat marfa means through someone or with the help of someone that is the last step of sufism here only thing that will take you is love and devotion and nothing else can take you no mantra is there only love and devotion and when you get there and when your soul take bath in that amritsar or holy water pool everything is gone your mind is left behind your egoism and your lust your desire and your kaam krodh lo mohankar all these things will be gone all these things will be gone and you are in a state where you always stay intoxicated when you reach there those souls or those saints who make up to that level when everything is gone lust your desire egoism and all demand desire whatever then you don't need anything you don't need anything you don't care either you have a house or don't have a house you don't care what what kind of physical materialistic thing you have or don't have those things don't make difference to you at all and when you are at that level most of the time you are in a blissful state most of the time you stay intoxicated because you are drinking the holy water or amrit in that par brahm area you don't feel anything most of that you are at the higher level of consciousness your physical mind and sensory body all those you hardly feel anything if, if someone even try to hurt you you don't feel it and you don't need anything and you already cross the shriyat and trikat now you are in the haqeeqat area in self realization area you don't care for shriyat shriyat is like rules and regulation like sai bolle shah ji when he got up to that par brahm he didn't care for anything he didn't care for shriyat or rules and regulation and all the other people that used to go to masjid masjid to have a nawaz for five times and they will ask sai bolle shah ji bolle shah let's do the nawaz and bolle shah will ask them you guys do it they will say yes we do the nawaz five times and bolle shah will say i'll do it all the times and they will ask bolle shah let's go to masjid and bolle shah will say i have my own masjid and they will ask him where is your masjid he will say my physical body is my masjid and my forehead is the mihrab and instead of listening to a wang of a kazi i am listening to the sound current or kalam e ilahi or mangesh mani in my third eye center in mihrab 
and I don't have to listen the outside sound. And one time they asked him, Bullesha, let's go to Makkah for Hajj. Bullesha says, I have my own Makkah and I do Hajj all the time. And Bullesha wrote a beautiful poetry there. Hajji lok Makke bal jande, mera ranja mera Makka ni mein kamalinge. Jiswal jar use wal kaba, Bullesha says, those who want to become Haji, they can go to Makkah and do the Hajj. But my beloved is my Makkah and I am intoxicated in his love and I don't have to go to Makkah to do the Hajj. Do the Hajj. Same thing with other Sufi Fakir. They never did the outside thing. Same thing with Sultan Wahu. And Sultan Wahu said the same thing. Someone asked him to go to Makkah for Hajj. He said, my master is everything for me. Moshid Menu Hajj Makkeda Rahmat da Darwazafu. He said, my Moshid, my purple leg master is Hajj for me. And he is a door to such kind with his blessings and love. I can go back home. I don't have to go to Makkah to do the Hajj. When you get to that level, in self realization area or par brahm, you don't care for anything, outside things or shariat or traditions or worship is gone. Now you are in love with your master, you stay in intoxicated state. Same with Shah Hussain and all those Sufi case. Rabia Basi, who was a female particular master, the first female Patrulik master, Rabia Basriji from Basra and Baghdad area. Baghdad was a center of spirituality and Sufism in 8th and 9th century. Very big center. Many saints were there in that area. The Sufi saints. And Rabia Basri one time said, Allah, God, I wish I could burn your hell and your heaven. And she said, no one is worshipping you. To meet you, people worship you either to go to heaven or people worship you to avoid the hell. So they don't go to hell. Someone is doing meditation or avada to go to heaven. The other one is doing it not to go to hell. I wish I could warn both of these hell and heaven so people can get self-realization. Self-realization. And Bibi Rabia was say, even one time she was sold as a slave. And still she did a lot of meditation about it. And she never collected anything. She has a small little house. And she has one cup and one plate. So she can eat and drink something. That's it. And all those people who used to come to have his darshan and listen to the satsang. And she always made it clear to the disciple. Best thing is not shriyat, trikat. The best thing is hakikat. Know thyself. Then marfut. Be one with your master and go back home. When you are in that state, when you are beyond par brahm, when you are in intoxicated state, just like most Sufis, you don't care for anything like Miranji. When Miranji reached that level, Parvaram, she didn't care for anything. Even her own family criticized her. Why you got initiation from Saint Ravi Das? He is a Kobra master. And we belong to higher caste and he belonged to a lower caste. Miranji didn't care for that thing. And she said, my master is everything for me. Because she seen his master at the first, second, third level, up to such can she experienced everything. She realized whatever is outside is nothing but the reflection of the reflection. And she know everything. In Marfat, you have to become one with your master. You have to lose your own identity. You have to surrender yourself to your master. You have to surrender yourself to Marfat. In Marfut, all the Sufi saints believe in two things here. 
in Marfat area when you are ready to become one with your master. You can only, only do it if you cross Brahm, you go to Par Brahm and your soul take a bath in that Amrasar and after that everything is gone. You are out of the realms of mind, sensory body, physical body, you don't need anything. All calm, clothes, lobo, hunkar, lust, ego, desire and these things are gone. You surrender yourself to yourself. There are two things that Sufi Fakirs says, Fana and Baka. Fana means to eliminate yourself. Baka means to live forever. As Sant Darshan Singh Ji also explained, in his Marfat area, Jo mujko apne aap mein zazab kar le, Baka ke liye fnah chahta hu. Sant Darshan Singh Ji, in his masterpiece, in his Sufi Kalam says, I want to merge with my master. I want to, to be fana means I want to eliminate my own identity and I want to attain baka means to live forever. Before you attain baka, you have to have fana means to eliminate yourself. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. You can get to the Baka level only if you fana, that means you eliminate everything. And once you become one with your master, now you are Baka, that means you can live forever. You can live forever. Ever. That is when you and your master becomes one. And it happens before crossing the dark tunnel, Mukam is Ramat. When you go through that tunnel, you and your master becomes one. There is no difference between you and your master. At that level, Sai Bulla Shah say, says, Ranja Ranja Kardini me ape Ranja hui, Akho ni me nuti, do Ranja hir na akho koi. Here Sai Bulla Shah says, I don't know I am a Bulla Shah, I am Shah Banayat. Here is, here there is no here, Ranja only, that means there is beloved only. You lose your own identity, you don't even know who you are, you become part of him. You and your Satgur becomes one, because in true love, there are never two, there is only one. As Kabir Sahib Ji says, Parit ki gali itni sakni dono nahi samay. In a true love, two cannot fit in this path. If you say, here I am, here is my master, you can't go through that street, that street that is known as Preet or true love. Preet ki gali itni sankani dono na hi smai. Kabir Sahib says you have to become one with your master, then you will know what is true love. You cannot experience true love at physical level, mental level or sensory level. All these things are attachments, attachments, and we can call them love. But in Marfat, you have to become one with your master. You and your master becomes one, then you cross that dark tunnel where the light is green. Then you go to Sohang Desh, you hear the sound of float, then you go to Sachkhand. Now, the perfect living master, even if someone makes to such kind, can he become a perfect living master? No. If someone reaches such kind, he cannot become perfect living master unless his own master and the master of that master and the totality of consciousness or God says yes. Unless the God gave him authorization. When Hajur Maharaj Baba Saban Singh Ji was given a seva by Baba Jaman Singh Ji, Baba Saban Singh Ji refused it many times. And Baba Saban Singh Ji said, Gurudev, there, some of your disciples already reached such kind. They are senior than me. Why don't you ask them to do the seva? And Baba Jaman Singh Ji, as you all know, closed his eye and said, the Maj has come. 
at that time when a predecessor is picked up the decision is made by your master his master and almighty god or totality of consciousness when great master baba saavn singh ji was picked up as a particular master the seva was given to baba saavn singh ji the decision was made by baba jamal singh ji swami ji maharaj tulsi saab and from the god then you can become a perfect living master and it happens only with the decision of god in fana how to get the fana how to eliminate that thing at that time the inner darshan of a master do it at that time your master will give you a drishti with his nuri swarup eyes with his radiant form when when your master gave you drishti with those eyes then you eliminate yourself then you eliminate yourself that master will give you a grace a blessing when master is in a radiant form nuri swarup when with his nuri swarup when he look at you that drishti will eliminate you and you become part of your master then you cross and that is marfut and once you reach marfut you don't care for anything you don't feel anything even surmad ben surmad attain that stage he didn't care for anything surmad came to india as a businessman actually from iran but he met a sufi saint in new delhi then he became sufi he became intoxicated in his love and surmad was assassinated he didn't care for anything he didn't care for anything and once you get to that level then you will see your master in every one for you everybody looks same then you feel the presence of your master in everything even outside in trees in in humans in in worlds in any months you feel the presence of your master because all these things 8.4 billion species do have a soul when you get self realization you can see that soul in them then you won't discriminate then everything looks equal to you you will see your master in every one of them because you become the form of your master you get to one you become one you become one with totality of consciousness when sarmad was assassinated aurangzeb gave the order to the the person who was supposed to kill him you can call them jalad whatever when that person came with this sword in his hand and sarmad saw him when sarmad saw him sarmad saw his master in him he saw my master is coming with his sword and he was so happy and he said master i never saw you carrying a sword you look so handsome when you get to that state at that level you are always in an intoxicated state everybody looks equal to you everybody looks same to you same to you because you become part of the totality of consciousness please accept my seva this is a very big topic i can continue it for a long time but i like to stop it here maybe in next episode or next time i'll talk try to talk more but please accept my seva and forgive all my mistakes rather so right my dear holy family wonderful so now we can do 5 uh, minutes of meditation to prepare ourselves for our holy father ishwar puri ji um, and his grace so let's do 5 minutes of meditation
monk asking his master, the senior monk, he said, Master, is it appropriate for monks to use email? And the master says, yes, you can use emails so long as there are no attachments. <laughs> The earth is in a process, processing of ascension. We as humans are having to adjust our frequencies. Can you address ascension? This is an evolutionary process. This has always been going on. And we revert to a zero state again and again, and the ascension starts. And there is an evolution of human bodies, evolution of forms of life, at the same time, there's an evolution of awareness and consciousness that goes on. And as time goes on, the ability to reach higher levels of awareness increases. At the same time, the temptations and distractions increase. Therefore, it so happens that in the various eons of life that goes on in this planet, we find that we are balanced out by less distraction, more difficult to meditate. More distractions, easier to meditate because of our higher ascended uh, uh, awareness. So this is a continuous cycle. It goes into several cycles which they divide as yugas. And they say there are four yugas through which you pass. And the earliest yuga has very few distractions. There's not much civilized, civilized living, not much civilization, not no iPhones, <laughs> no computers no movies, no distractions. Very little distraction of life takes very long because of the difficulty of reaching a higher level of consciousness. And then the yuga changes and more of the outside things, distractions come, become easier. Today we are passing through the fourth yuga of Kali Yuga, the Iron Age. In this Iron Age, there's the maximum distractions. And there's a maximum grace of masters coming and more masters coming during this age than ever before. So it's balanced out. And this is a process that goes on. After this, we destroy everything and we start all over again. This is the nature of our life on this planet. Is it the seeker's role to follow his or her master's instruction to reach the radiant form. What role or help does the master play during the early stages of the path? In the earliest stages of the path, you recognize a master as a human being who appears to know more than you do. Period, that's what you think. And that's good enough for a start. So you are guided and sometimes you say, I am thinking of something. Does the master know what I am thinking? I better be careful what I think. <laughs> and then you begin to feel master gives you answers occasionally. How did he know? How did master know? Maybe he can read our minds. There's a gradual process that we go on in our relationship. Then comes the period when we feel the master's love and grace is amazing. He's helping us. This is all happening physically. We have not reached the radiant form. Then there's all external experiences we're having. In internal experiences, we begin to try to meditate and think of the master. When we do meditation properly, with love and devotion, we begin to have a conversation with an imaginary master, which we figure out ourselves. Then are we sure we're talking to the master and not to our mind? So when a perfect living master initiates us, he tells us how to check out. If it's the imaginary master your mind is making up, or it's the real master who initiated you, you're talking to. So we apply the test. And very often in the test, we fail because it was the mind making up the master. But our, in the test, it fails. That we were just trying to talk in our own imagination and thinking it's the master telling us. He was not telling us because we applied the test. It failed. Then gradually, when we apply the test, it doesn't fail. And we see the masters come now. Sometimes the master hides and we can feel his presence and we can hear his voice, but we cannot see him. 
this experience continues for quite a while then the master that ultimately appears and in his radiant form he appears at a distance as if he is coming from a distance and goes away he comes again and goes away this is this is because of the nature of our attention when you try to concentrate attention it does fluctuate it goes and comes it's the attention that is wavering that gives us that kind of experience after practice you can see the master any time you like and have a conversation and with the uh, safeguard of checking out it's not the mind you are able to have a daily continuous relationship after that the master is there whether you close your eyes or don't close your eyes that you can feel his presence after that you can see his presence you can see him inside and outside you can be driving your car and feel in the corner of your eye he is sitting next to you and you can see there he is sitting next to you so the manifestation of the radiant form of the master comes in these stages but eventually he becomes a friend always with you then more things happen supposing you are under attack by somebody and we say master protect me till we have reached the stage that we have manifested the radiant form protection is just a thought a belief in our head master has protected me but after the radiant form has come master steps in front of you and he says no nobody can touch him it's a great experience there is a power manifesting as a human being in a physical manifestation and you can see that the master protects when you are a friend he is on your side and supposing you are doing master's work supposing he gives you some seva some service to do that you do it for me and you go to perform that action you will see master gets right inside you you feel your body and the master's body is the same these experiences come begin to come automatically the greater your progress is through so radiant form once it is developed the master is doing all these things we discover at the end that all the steps that we have gone through were done by the grace of the master because just by trying to push with your own mind you cannot create any of these experiences so it's the master's love and pull that creates all these gradual experiences for us i have been initiated by a perfect living master who named his successor the successor doesn't come often so i am enjoying this seminar very much i believe you may also be a perfect living master was i hoodwinked by the other perfect living master or this a kabir nanak kind of deal first of all i should clarify i am no master i don't look like one i don't behave like one so don't make that mistake i am just a disciple of the great master hazur maharaj baba sawan singh and what i am doing sharing my experiences with you is my seva my service to my master you think i'm doing it for you i'm very selfish person <laughs> i am doing it as my own seva for my master and what happens what you get you getting with his power i can guarantee you everything that you getting with me my friendship with you the what is the power behind this is great master i see it i see it working therefore uh, so don't put me in that category of uh, your perfect living master and the successor who comes or doesn't come but if you are enjoying this seminar i am very happy about it and all the credit goes to my master so but i am happy that you get it and if your own successor of your master doesn't come it doesn't matter because you are not initiated by the successor you are initiated by the master do not think that this is a kingdom where a son inherits the father's kingdom and becomes a king masters come on their own authority for their own souls their own marked souls the masters come for them it's not a succession that matters at all if there are successors of masters they come for their own souls of course if you are believing in a master and go to his headquarters or go to his dera or ashram and you are happy to go there because your master was there that's wonderful but your master is your master and there is no need to switch switch loyalties to a successor because your master died 
because master will never die if a perfect living master initiated you he never dies and remains your master forever not only remains your master for the rest of your life he will remain your master even if you are in the astral or causal plane for a long time the same master will be with you so but enjoy the seminar anyway <laughs> A well-known master, Baba Fakir Chand, says that the physical form is not aware of miracles ascribed to him. He says it is all mind. Please comment. I had a good chance to meet Baba Fakir Chand many times. He happened to be our neighbor in Usharpur city in Punjab, and that was where his dera was, and he. Followed another route of succession from Swamiji of Agra, and he was teaching the same path of the masters. That great master was teaching; the other masters were teaching. And I loved his teaching. I used to sometimes meet him privately. He was a good friend of my father, by the way, and so we were meeting frequently. And he had two good reasons to make a statement. that masters really don't know anything it's these it's all in the in the mind of the disciple when he sees miracles and he in a couple of his discourses has actually said that during the war where the indian army was also participating in the war in the middle east he was working in a base post office in the war advance of um, post office i think in the war and three of his disciples were in the uh, advance section where actual battle was going on one day those three advance satsangis of his they were outnumbered by the enemy and ambushed by the enemy and enemy was on four sides of them and they knew they are going to be killed because everywhere they looked the enemy was all there so they all three sat together and they prayed to their master baba fakir chand and they said baba ji we have been ambushed and we are going to die today we want your blessings that you will take us to such khand and that we will uh, not uh, not die like ordinary people all three of them saw baba fakir chand in front of them and he came and he said no you won't die your time is not yet there is a bush behind this where you are sitting in the camp behind that tent there is a bush you remove the bush under that underneath that there is a tunnel if you go through the tunnel it will come out behind the enemy lines and you will escape they removed the bush and they saw there was a tunnel exactly like baba fakir chand told them and he disappeared after telling them and then they went through that and came out and were saved they ran they ran to the uh, base post office where the baba fakir chand was working and said baba ji thank you for saving us he said what i never saved you they said baba we saw you you saved us he said no no it must be something in your mind it must be inside you baba ji don't play these tricks with us because we know you saved us we saw you we would never have known our mind could never have known that there is a way out and we could escape he said tell you the truth he told them tell you the truth i was myself so frightened when the shells were falling outside my camp i was so afraid how could i save you and this story spread with like wildfire and he himself mentioned this story couple of times so people say that baba fakir chand was the only honest honest uh, mystic the only honest master who at least declared the master know nothing and it's only everything is in the head of the mind of the disciple now i know that baba fakir chand knew everything we had so many conversations with him he was a regular perfect living master and therefore what happened what is the story then all about the story is that too many people were not meditating they thought they could fly, blindly follow a human being as a master and get everything master was insisting that truth lies inside and they were trying to follow outside 
So he took this ploy, a very simple ploy, to tell them, outside master knows nothing. Go inside and find the inside master is helping you. Now, did he tell a lie? No. He told the truth because the real master is inside. The real master, when you get initiated, is actually inside you. What about the human being outside who initiates you? He's a reflection of the inner master outside. The real master who really takes us to such current is inside us, not outside. The outside is coming because we are not inside. Supposing there was a way that we could always go in and see who is our master, we won't see outside master. We would only see the inside master. So therefore, the truth is that our master is really inside. And this reflection is outside because we can't see inside. And he functions outside exactly like he functions inside. Therefore, Baba Fakir Chan's main idea of emphasizing this was that don't just follow a person outside, do what he says, which is to go inside and find the real master inside, find the radiant form of the master inside. So that is why uh, there's a book, a uh, uh, biography of Baba Fakir Chan. The title is The Unknowing Saint. The saint who never knew, who said I didn't know anything. Incidentally, his son also took over as a Gaddi and uh, he he claimed he knew everything. So they said, your father used to say he knows nothing. He says, my father was too humble. I am not. I do everything. <laughs> do you find that older people have a harder time learning to meditate than younger people? I can't make a general rule like this. Some older people are very good at meditating, they have more time, they are less distracted. But I do know that meditation as an exercise, meditation as an ability to sit quietly in your body with good health and to concentrate your attention, in that case a younger age is an advantage. I do feel that the earlier one can start meditation the, the greater efficient, greater efficiency will be there in that meditation because health does make a difference. When you get old, you have sickness, your knees are hurting, you can't sit properly, you, you don't know what time you'll have to run to number one. <laughs> I mean, these are things that really come in the way of, of regular good meditation. Therefore, to that extent, the younger people have an advantage and I always advise young people, start as early as you can. Don't postpone. Don't postpone meditation. The best results you will get when you are still young and strong and healthy and can get all these things done. So th therefore, there is a certain advantage. But on the other hand, very senior people have more time for meditation. And that is their advantage. So I cannot generalize this that always the younger people will have an advantage. They have their own advantage, older people have their own advantage. Do we experience pain or suffering on the astral plane? How do we feel it without a physical body? We do not suffer pain or, or pleasure on our bodies at all, not even here. When we have pain on our body, it's the astral body suffering, not this body. Physical body does not suffer pain or pleasure. You can take the awareness out by anesthesia, by putting your attention away, there is no pain. You can use acupuncture, have no pain. You can just shift the attention away, the body by itself does not have any pain or pleasure or any other sensation. The sense perceptions are all built into the astral self. Therefore, whether we have pain or pleasure here or in the astral self, they are always on the astral self. That's where the sense perceptions are. So that is why we don't need this body for pain and pleasure. We need the astral self, the sense perceptions, to have pain and pleasure. How similar is Sant Mark to Buddhism, to Buddhism? Very similar. Buddha said, that the truth is inside. Sant says the truth is inside. Very similar. 
Now, Buddha said that nothing, that everything that we see here comes out of nothingness. That nothingness is not shunya, what he calls shunya, is not emptiness, it is nothingness. Nothingness means nothing has been manifested. All that can ever be manifested is included in the shunya or the zero or nothingness. So he gives an example of how we find that actual creations do take place out of nothingness. When these creations of the worlds, physical and astral, they dissolve, they dissolve back into nothingness, into shunya. And from there they all come back again. So he was right in the description of what is happening here with whatever is explained in the Santamak teachings also. Buddha also felt that the truth lies within and running outside does not help us, which is also true. The Santamak said the same thing. Buddha also said that meditation helps us to discover ourselves and attain the state of nirvana or to go beyond life and birth. And Santamak says the same thing. So many similarities between Buddhism and Santma. What place does shamanism have in your opinion? In my, in my, in my opinion, the shamans have a vision. They have a vision which has been developed and they can see things which is beyond our physical vision. Sometimes it is a vision because we can see but we don't have to see because we don't know how to see and it's actually here, even physical vision. An example was given of sham, shamanic vision where they said on an island there were people living and they had never seen a ship and when the ships came at a distance they couldn't see anything because they never knew what a ship is. But a shaman there could see. He said, there is some new form of thing coming and it's a, that's a ship. And, and when it came, he could show others, these are ships. So he was considered to be shaman because he had that vision. It did not necessarily mean that he had to show some supernatural sights. He could show that which our, we neglect to see, which our sense perception don't see. But when he points out, we can see. So shamanic journeys, have given wonderful experiences to people and they follow um, several shamans. Shamans themselves are of several categories and some just deal with an external thing, some deal with a little more, some deal with the astral plane and some go a little higher. So shamanism is uh, people who have practiced that or gone to shamans, they have some kind of a head start because they know things are all inside and coming from our perception. Have you been to Sajkhand? Have you seen Radha Swami? How many of your followers been to Sajkhand? Can I? Well, let me tell you something. I, I am a follower of this master, Azur Baraj Baba Sawan Singh. He initiated me and he promised certain things and he has kept his promise. He told me not to share any personal experiences except what he says you, he will allow for me to share. It's a fair enough bargain. He gave me so much, I can only share what he authorizes me to share. I am sorry to say, unfortunately, he does not want me to give an answer to this question. So, all I can say indirectly, and very indirectly I can say that whatever he promised, he delivered. And I am very happy for that. I have no doubt about it. He convinced me to the hilt he was a perfect living master. Now, whatever these statements mean, you can take it at their face value, but more than that, I cannot say about my own experience how far I went or what I saw. So far as Radha Swami is concerned, Radha Swami is merely a name given to a movement that started in Agra 
and Seth Shivdyal Singh, who was we affectionately call Swamiji. Swamiji taught Sant Mat, the same Sant Mat we have learned from all other great masters. He did not teach anything different. And what he taught us was identical to what we are talking about, except when his wife's name was Radha, and he was called Swamiji, so a lot of people began to think that Radha Swami is to pay respect to the husband and wife, Swamiji and his wife Radha. Radha was her name. And he clarified. He says, if you say Radha Swami, please do not take this as my name and my wife's name. And in one of the quotes that quote him, he says, Radha Ad Surat Ka Naam, Swami Ad Purush Tum Jaan. That means, think that the primordial soul, from where this soul started, call that soul as Radha. And the Purush, the Sat Purush, who created all this, should be called the, the Swami. Therefore, when you say Radha Swami, do not refer to me or my wife. Refer to the ultimate reality. That's how we explained. So therefore, Radha Swami began to be used for that. Then one of his disciples, whom he named to carry on his work, he said, I want to use these words, Radha Swami. He's, Swami Ji told him, my mat, my path was Sant Mat. But if you like to call it Radha Swami, with my interpretation, go ahead. And ever since then, this word Radha Swami became very popular. And in fact, it became almost a greeting. When we used to go to a master, we used to greet each other Radha Swami. It almost became like a Namaste. When you say Namaste, what is Namaste? Nama Sate. You are, you are saluting the truth. Namaste means Nama Sate. That you are saluting the truth. Radha Swami. We are saluting as this whole, the ultimate Satpurash. So the meaning was only a salutation. So, but later on more things developed and people began to fight over words. And they fought over words like they fight all the time. Like we fight over scriptures, we fight over quotations, and they began to fight what words they mean. And, and the current thinking is that the highest form of awareness that you can have, uh, which, which the successor of Swamiji, one Rai Saligram, who is a postmaster general of UP, which he said that there are regions where Satpurish can also have excellent experiences to generate all the experiences below. After all, the creator, when the creator creates all these levels of experiences of these worlds around, where does he go for his lab, which is his research lab, that he has to go and say, this is the kind of world I, I can create. So, Rai Saligram, the successor, he said that there are three regions, even beyond such cult, which no soul can go to, but Satpurish can. The totality can experience within itself those two regions. And he called them a luck, a gum, and a nami. And because he named them, it was very easy. The mind loves classification. Mind loves how many stages there are. So when we say first stage, second, third, fourth, fifth, there's a true home, they say, no, eighth, three more. So it becomes a superior belief system. You eight, uh, we can add a few more and make it 10, 11, and make it more superior. But the, the, the truth is that the reference to those, Alak, Agam, Anami, is a reference to what does they mean, these words? Alak means it cannot be lakya, it cannot be described or written. Agam means it is beyond knowledge. It cannot be gum or beyond knowledge. Anami means it cannot even be named. They're talking of states of being which are beyond our knowledge, beyond what we can think of. And the ultimate creator, the Satapurush, goes, can go into these regions of experiences of his own in order from, to pick up everything that is created here from there. Which means, including darkness. Darkness would not be here if it was not somewhere in his pocket to create 
So therefore, he has his own reasons to create. So the current belief, because they put the categories from five levels of consciousness to eight levels, they said the eighth one, the Anami, would be the highest, and we can call it the Radha Swami. So there, is, there are always controversies about words and use of words. It's not important to run after words. These words are not spoken beyond the mind. In the mind, there are no words. And therefore, uh, to, to figure out intellectually what it means will keep you always in the mental realm. All intellect operates in the mind and never takes you to spiritual regions. Therefore, leave the words aside and go with the real thing. Go within and go with the help of a perfect living master beyond the mind. Let's try today meditation behind the eyes with love and devotion. Where you visualize your beloved and you express your love to the beloved in the best way you can and see the results of it. Please assume that your body is your house and you are sitting on the sixth floor of that house behind the eyes. First establish yourself in the meditation chamber behind the eyes, then visualize your beloved, then start any kind of meditation you want, including Simran, listening to the sound or conversation with the master.